Histoplasma is a systemic fungus. Now this cause this genus causes a specific disease known as histoplasmosis. Most is indicating that it's a fungus group. Now the organism which we're going to study in the genus histoplasma is histoplasma capsulatum. Now histoplasma capsulatum has a specific feature which is known as that it is dimorphic. Dimorphic meaning that at specific temperatures inside or outside of the body it acquires a specific shape. Now, now this histoplasma outside the body has a specific shape which is known as a mold meaning that it has high fee but outside at a specific temperature it form the its structure is known as a mold but when it goes inside the body it is converted into yeast now this mold grows in soil that is contaminated mostly by bird poop now bats also come in that genus so the birds are not affected but the uh, but the bats can be affected and they secrete this fungus in their guano. It's a specific type of bad spread, I think. Now, this mold has a very beautiful shape, which you can see it's look, it looks like this. And this organism, this fungus divides asexually, meaning that it does not have to mate with other fungus in order to produce, but it forms itself. Now, what happens is that it makes two types of babies. Now, it can make a tuberculate my, macroconida or microconida. Now, this hyphae will grow finger-like projections, which is known as tuberculate macroconida, which is thick-walled, whereas sometimes it grows small, very small babies, which is known as microconida, which is small, thin, and smooth spores now these spores are what these spores get inhaled when these spores get inhaled what happens they enter the lung and in the lung they are engulfed by the macrophages now you think they might be dead but inside the macrophages this organism survives how do they survive they survive by converting into yeast form now this yeast form what happens is it survives by producing a lot of alkaline substances that is basically bicarbonates and ammonia which neutralizes the liposomal acidity that is supposed to digest it. Now, if it is affecting the lungs, what will happen? It will cause damage to the lungs and it will result in granulomas formation. Now, these granulomas have central calcification upon healing. These, uh, this organism can also be disseminated to the macrophages of the liver as well as of the spleen. Now what happens there, like the lungs, it will also form granulomatous lesions in the liver as well as the spleen, which will have abnormal LFTs and specific infections that coexist with it. Now, this organism has a specific tell. Now the specific tell is that the skin of the person will have certain tender nodules. These tender nodules are known as erythema nodosum, which helps, which helps us give the sign that actually the immunity is developing. And if we do a skin test by injecting um, some antigen in the skin now what we'll have it will we'll have an induration now the induration if it is approximately five centimeters that can also tell us that the immunity antibodies has been formed against the proteins or antigen that is produced by this fungus but what happens in immunodeficient people in immunodeficient people such as like infants and in age the skin is not the skin test is not positive as there, there are no antibodies made, how will the induration be formed? And the disease manifests as in a much severe form which affects all of your system including the liver, the spleen and the lungs and much worse uh, appearance occurs. Now, how do we diagnose this? We diagnose it by taking a biopsy of the tissue 
we take a biopsy of this, this, or even effect, affects the bone marrow. So we can also take the bone marrow aspiration. Now, what we see in it, we see macrophages, which has oval cell inside them. So meaning that this organism in dimorphic form, in yeast form, has an oval cell, oval appearance, which is inside the macrophages, obviously, because it survives in there. And we can treat it with KOH. KOH is a specific type of material which helps to dissolve the surrounding tissue in which the fragrance is present and methamine silver stain which helps us to look at the fungus because a fungus has a proteoglycan layer which is quite different from that of the normal eukaryotic cells. We know the fungus is a eukaryote but it cannot be seen with gram stain. So this organism is grown on culture. In culture what we would see the mold obviously because it's outside and this uh, can be cultured on a special medium which is known as Sarod's agar. Now, what would we see in this agar? We would see a lot of hyphae and along with hyphae babies which are tuberculate macronida or microconida. Now, we can also identify this organism because it has some sort of severe manifestation. So, we can see it on ELISA. On ELISA, we can see histoplasmosis polysaccharide. And by, for quick identification, we can also use DNA probe for diagnostic, for even further rapid diagnosis of this organism. We can do complement fixation. If we find the titer across 1 ratio 31, we can say it's there, it's there, it's there, it's there. Complement fixation, 1 ratio 37. You have to remember it. Now, immunodiffusion test also helps to detect the precipitant antibodies, which we can find in the form of two bands, which is the M band and the H band in agar gel diffusion assay. Now, how do we treat such a disease? We treat such a disease by normally if it enters lungs and in immunocompetent peoples, most of them do not possess the inf infection symptoms. So they are asymptomatic. So we do not have to give anything in them because we don't know. We can basically find it on biopsy or some other culture or we are doing um, antibody titer for some specific thing. Now, it because if it... If it progresses to a progressive lung disease, it can call, we can give the patient oral itraconazole. It goes to the liver and the spleen. We can give the patient parenteral itraconazole because it has um, more bioavailability. And if it damages the kidneys, we can give shift the patient to liposomal amphotericin B because um, it is it, it's not excreted through that route obviously now in meningitis we can get the patient fluconazole and because it penetrates the spinal fluid a lot well